Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. My name is Patrick. I'm a final year PhD student at Imperial College in London and my supervisor is Michael Foot. And today I'm going to present some recent work that we've done on protecting private inputs in secure multi-party computations with bounded distortion guarantees. In order to do so, I will first introduce the topic of secure multi-party computation. Then I will talk about privacy and utility concerns in SMC. This will enable me to motivate our main objective, which is to randomize SMC outputs with bounded distortion guarantees. Um, in the fourth section, I will present the optimal randomized mechanisms that we've designed. And finally, I'll conclude the talk with an empirical evaluation of our methods, where I'll show you the performance in terms of utility and privacy. So first of all, SMC, Secure Multiparty Computation, is a domain of cryptography that enables several parties to compute a public function of their own private inputs while keeping the inputs secret and without having to rely on any other trusted third party. A famous example of that is Yao's, Yao's millionaires problem, where um, two millionaires want to know who the richest of them is without having to reveal their own wealth. So applications of secure multi-party computation include e-voting, auctions, and private data mining. And since the 80s, protocols have been designed in order to achieve SMC. These protocols fall into two main categories. The first one is based on Yao's global circuits. And the second one in, in, um, encompasses protocols which are based on secret sharing schemes. So, um, the one thing that I'd like to point out is that the security that those protocols guarantee says that nothing leaks during the protocol about the private inputs apart from the public output. But this notion of security raised a few concerns for us and that was the starting point of our research. Indeed, in SMC, the public output as a function of the private inputs inevitably leaks some information about the private inputs. Although this information flow is commonly referred to as the acceptable uh, information flow in the literature on SMC, we were interested in trying to quantify and to limit this information flow by randomizing the public output. In order to do so, we needed to formalize two specific notions, a notion of privacy in order to quantify the information that flows um, about one input and a notion of utility in order to assess how good of an approximation a randomization is. So before presenting our approach, um, I'd like to make a brief digression in differential privacy um, because it is a topic that people often talk about um, or often think of, think of when I introduce our problem and motivation. So differential, differential privacy is closely re related to our work in that it aims at protecting private inputs in statistical databases by randomizing the output of queries. To understand that, it's important to recall that the statistical database is a particular type of database that only allows a, cert a certain type of queries, such as sum, count, or averages. In this setting, the aim of differential privacy is to ensure statistical independence between any single input and the output. The formal definition is recalled in this equation, but the intuition here is what matters most for us. Um, the utility in differential privacy, on the other hand, is defined as a statistical distance from the actual output. High utility means that the distortion on average will be low. So let us now discuss why the notions of privacy and utility used in differential privacy might be questionable and might not be best suited to our problem. First, the notion of privacy in differential privacy totally makes sense when we compute statistical quantities over a large population. For example, it is reasonable, it, it's a reasonable privacy guarantee to ensure that the average of a lot of values will not be just dramat dramatically affected by a single value, so that changing or removing the last item will not have a dramatic effect on the result of the computation. In a two-party computation, however, this guarantee is less meaningful and might even be undesired. Indeed, when we compute the sum or the maximum of the inputs, you wouldn't want the output of the computation to be independent of one of the two inputs. That wouldn't be a sensible outcome. 
finally, if the function f is not symmetrical, then dp would not even be applicable at all, since removing one input would not make sense. Um, in terms of utility, ensuring a low statistical distance may be a totally reasonable guarantee um, in, in repeated or low stack computations, but large distortions may occur with low probability, and that may be an insufficient guarantee in one shot or sensitive computations. For these reasons, we decided to base our model on different notions of privacy and utility, which I will present next. We decided to make use of entropy-based measures stemming from quantitative information flow in order to quantify privacy in a way that we believe to be more meaningful for few parties. Another av advantage is that specific entropy measures can reflect concrete properties of a secret, such as the probability to guess a secret or part of a secret in one try or in n tries, or it can reflect the expected minimum number of binary questions we have to answer in order to guess a secret. The utility, on the other hand, will be measured as the maximal distortion. We'll, we believe that it is a highly desirable, it is highly desirable to have maximal distortion guarantees in sensitive scenarios as well as in one-shot computations. We believe, however, that our approach should be refined and improved depending on the use case and the customer's requirements, as we strongly believe that there, there doesn't exist a unique choice of privacy and utility that is more suited than all others in all circumstances. So now that we have justified our approach, let us present our concrete model more precisely. Let's recall that we're considering the secure computation of a function f, and that we want to quantify the information that its output reveals about the private inputs. So let's further assume that we wish to quantify the information that an attacker N learns on the private input, input Y, that we call the targeted inputs. Let's call Z the spectator's input. Then by considering the output O of F as a composition of random variables, we can quantify the information learned on Y with the conditional entropy of Y given the output O. Although we focused on the mean entropy in this work, our approach also accommodates other entropy measures such as Shannon entropy, Rennie entropy, and the whole family of G entropies. Based on this privacy measure that we have just introduced, we can now reason about the mechanisms that is going to enhance, that are going to enhance the input's privacy. Our method is going to work as follows. We're going to take the function f that is um, to be computed, illustrated on the left-hand side, and we're going to randomize its output with a randomization function called h. The resulting function called g, and highlighted in green on the right-hand side, is going to be our approximation of f. The post-processing inequality display on the slide says that the output of the random of, of the approximation g reveals less information than that of the original function f, which is exactly what we want. However, and as mentioned before, we also wish to offer some utility guarantee and we're going to impose a threshold delta on the maximal distortion introduced by approximation g. The problem that we faced is that it is hard to find an optimal such randomization that maximizes the conditional entropy of y given g of x in general. In fact, in previous works, we solved a particular case of this optimization, optimization problem where we assumed that g was an additive approximation of f, meaning that it could be written as g of x equals f of x plus phi, where we further assumed that the noise phi was independent from the output of f. The Laplace mechanism in differential privacy, for example, obeys this equation. The orange curve in the graph below um, shows the privacy gains that we managed to achieve in this particular example with the um, optimal additive approximation of f with independent noise phi. And the green curve shows the results of the methods that I'm going to present in the remainder of this talk. In order to achieve those results highlighted in green, we relaxed the assumption that the noise phi was independent of the output of f. So when relaxing this independent as independence assumption, we end up again with the difficult problem of maximizing h, h of y given g of x. What we decided to do is to solve this optimization problem for a particular class of sparse functions f, which we define next. 
and to then experimentally evaluate these solutions on general functions. So um, we introduced the definition of a sparse function as follows. A function is delta sparse if given targeted input y, evaluating f on two different spectators inputs z and z prime yields some output separated by a distance of more than delta. For example, a function f is zero sparse if for all input y, the partially evaluated function f of y dot is injective. Well, based on that theoretical definition, we can find approximations g that optimally randomize sparse functions f. So we managed to solve a um, um, simpler problem. Moreover, although the notion of sparse functions is mainly of theoretical interest, we show that these solutions g also produce high entropy gains on general functions f. So let's first discuss um, the case where we have uniform prior beliefs on the inputs. If we assume g to be a delta approximation of f and f to be two delta sparse, which uh, we recall the definition above, then we show that the entropy to be maximized can be expressed as a function of the cardinality of the inputs and the output domains. The aim is thus to find an, op an output randomization function h, which minimizes the number of different outputs. In order to do so, we designed a simple greedy algorithm which browses the output from left to right and gathers as many, as many outputs as possible into a single output O prime while respecting the maximal distortion bound delta. In particular, the algorithm can merge a, a maximum of two delta plus one outputs into a single output O prime in order to um, verify this maximal distortion constraint. We notice that this algorithm is deterministic, but we can show that this algorithm is, is the best randomized delta approximation of f that we can find under those, those assumptions. So let's, uh, let's now discuss the case where we have a non-uniform prior belief on the inputs. We can show that our optimization problem is equivalent to a simpler minimization problem, which involves a function d of o. Instead of dwelling upon this equation, I'll show you an illustration of this optimization problem and I'll discuss the solution. Um, so let us consider um, that the values of d of o, which are involved in this optimization problem, are given as an array. And let us consider, consider for now that the, um, let us consider for now the previous greedy algorithm, which is highlighted in red. So we have six values of O which are grouped into two different buckets. The leftmost bucket um, contains three values which are 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. So the maximum of these values is 0 0.8. And for the rightmost bucket, the maximum of the values of D of O is 0 0.9. Um, finally, the sum of those maximums is 1.7. And based on that um, illustration, I can now say that the aim of the optimization problem is to find the best combination of buckets that minimizes this sum while keeping in mind that the length of the bucket cannot exceed, exceed 2 delta plus 1. So in order to um, solve this optimization problem, we built a dynamic algorithm um, which works in linear time, which runs in linear time in the number of, of outputs. An optimal solution that we obtain is displayed in green for, for this example where we achieve a minimal sum of 1.5. Okay, so although we proved the optimality of our solutions for a particular class of functions f, we showed that our solutions also provide high privacy gains for non-sparse functions. In the example shown on the slide, we consider the polynomial function f with one targeted input and two spectators inputs, and we evaluated the privacy gains offered by our two algorithms. We performed 20 iterations of this experiment. The coefficients were randomly sampled between 1 and 20. The inputs were also ranged between 1 and 20, and their distributions were drawn from a Dirichlet distribution. Um, and the maximal distortion bound delta was set to 1. We also compared the privacy gains offered by other randomizations, randomizations which comply, comply with the maximal distortion bound delta. GUNI adds um, noise uniformly 
uniformly distributed over minus delta and plus delta. G opt adds a noise phi which is optimally distributed and which is the result of our previous work as mentioned before. G lap is the equivalent of the Laplace mechanism in its discrete and truncated version. And finally, G true simply truncates the output. So we can see on the graph that our, our algorithms provide higher privacy gains than other randomizations. We can also see that the Laplace mechanism provides the worst privacy, which is understandable because its aim by essence is to preserve a low statistical distance, which other schemes um, are not concerned with. Concerns with. We also evaluated our mechanisms on other non polynomial functions and uh, different entropy measures. So, as I've just said, the Laplace mechanism is designed to ensure a high expected gain, which is another kind of entropy uh, of utility measure. So, it is fair to evaluate our mechanisms with this utility measure to see how they compare. Um, as expected, and as our algorithms only care about the maximal distortion bound, they perform quite poorly in terms of expected gain. On the contrary, and as expected, the Laplace mechanism produces a higher expected gain. So we can see that there is, there is a trade-off between utility and privacy, and that selecting an appropriate randomizing mechanism really depends on the customer's requirements. To conclude, we showed that um, protecting private inputs required appropriate notions of privacy and utility. We suggested one such choice that enables us to reason about privacy in secure multi-party computation with few parties. Under that model, we designed optimal randomizing mechanisms for sparse functions, and we showed that those mechanisms show good performance on general functions and under general entropy measures. Finally, we'd be interested in the future to study optimal randomizing mechanisms for more general functions. It would also be of interest to study if we can design some bespoke methods tailored to some specific applications. Well, thank you very much for listening to my talk. Um, I'd be very happy to answer your questions or, or to engage in further discussions should you have further requests. And um, thank you very much again, and I hope that you enjoyed the talk.